today I want to play around a little bit in my journal and share a process with you that I have created here and it has been real joy to do because it's quite simple and most importantly um, it sort of doesn't take that much concentration if you're finding it hard to concentrate or um, you know just to take your mind off things it's really uh, fun to do so what you will need to have for this is or that's what I'm going to use. You can find if you have similar things that you can um, maybe substitute with. So this is the Daniel Smith watercolor ground and I'm using the buff titanium. And uh, I'm also going to use some sort of a spatula knife. I'm thinking, where is my one? So something like this. I will also use um, watercolors, so you can pick out colors of your choice. And I am going to use a watercolor pencil, which can be any brand that you have. I am going to use the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarel, but again, up to you what brand you use. And I might see. Um, and add some of the gold elements as well. So here is what I do first. First I create this background uh, using the buff titanium watercolor ground and I aim to create texture. So once it dries it has a light texture to it. So um, the, the roughness is what makes things interesting I find and I also quite like sort of these areas are my favorite ones when it's sort of casually spread onto the paper and um, I like sort of these overlays and things like that I feel that here maybe it's a little bit over scratched I don't necessarily like these scratches but I do like the texture of these bits so I will show you how I do that and then um, we will work on this side which is nice and dry. I've done this um, a few days ago but I think it dries really quickly within I'd say within a few hours. I prefer to do mine overnight so that I know for sure it will be like super dry. Okay so mine is more on a liquidy side. We talked about this before and um, a few people said that it means that it's fresh. Oh sorry my drinking bottle is in the way. Okay so what I do here typically I load a little bit of this paste and then casually try to move it across and work sort of on a largish area so that I get different directions of these marks. So I particularly like this sort of thing. Keeping in mind you probably don't want it to be too thick. If you want to soften these scratchy areas you can go over, you have plenty of time, it doesn't dry immediately. And then just kind of swish it like that. And I find the more the shape is sort of um, less uniform than the more interest I get personally. So I like to create texture of a texture. I'm just going to use my finger, pardon me. And then these wide areas are quite appealing to me. And so that's what I'm going to do here. like that. So it's sort of becoming a little bit more there's like movement in this piece which I really like. I think I'll leave it at that really. Yeah. Um, I use the watercolor ground as so, as I was saying, I use a watercolor ground 
as um, as a paint really and um, not just as a ground but actually I create a nice base to work on and I seem to enjoy it mostly like that and that's what I wanted to share with you today so while this is going to be drying in its own time what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the already dried area and show you what I like to work or how I like to create uh, a bit of art here so what I'm going to do is just grab some um, I would go for a brush like the quill brush because I feel these bristles can take a lot they are more denser they're not as soft I feel like if I go with something soft like the um, black velvet which are quite pricey or raven um, the, br the bristles would just damage very quickly because of the harshness um, so let's go into watercolor and I'm thinking what colors I should go for okay so from here I'll do a voiceover and what I'm gonna do is use some watercolors that I had squeezed out from previous um, session here I'm showing a brush which I actually um, recently added to my brush collection and it's a very unusual thing <laughs> it's um i'll link it down below but it's called hand over coach liner and this is a one i believe this was the smallest and then um there are a few sizes so basically i'm just starting by kind of creating these well first of all splatters obviously um, but then I'm just wanting to play and it's a very simple process of adding in a way almost like blobs but just um, small areas of watercolor and then in a very playful way I just soften the edges on some of the sides of these swatches and then the other color at the bottom there so the first one was burnt bronze eye genuine and the second one is the olive green so the two colors have been um, recently added to my uh, ever so extending Daniel Smith watercolor collection and um, it's a lovely color and actually those two colors work so beautifully together the was there a third color I'm trying to think so far I'm just using those two um, they blend in quite beautifully together they also look really pretty I also have some um, remaining bits there of colors that I mixed with titanium white and you can see this right here this color was pretty much the same or very similar looking to titanium um, um, buff titanium which was that watercolor ground and so it blends in and you can't really see anything so you do need to keep in mind um, how to mix your colors and what colors to use so at this point I decided to use the third color which is Schmincke's gold brown and it's a beautiful very vivid color it has that kind of golden um, light to it look this is where I'm using this brush and it's just so much fun you can see how flimsy the tip is because it's so long so you're completely out of control when you're using this brush and you can create loads of very abstracty um, scribbles and marks it's just what an interesting brush I wish this brush came in a um, um, in what is it or the um, synthetic um, bristles but yeah th this is real hair and it's ox hair and it's quite remarkable how long ox hair is I wouldn't have thought so but there you go and um, yeah so unfortunately for those of you who do not like using animal hair brushes I can't recommend anything close to it even because this is like 
it's such a rare brush I've never seen anyone use it before I've never seen it featured anywhere so I was amazed to find it and um, I don't think it would be possible to create something like that with synthetic hair but who knows um, maybe it is possible and it just hasn't been made yet but if it has and I'm not aware then just uh, leave the comment below and it would be good to um, exchange that info so at this point I decided to add a bit of glitz and glam uh, and um, I'm using that Daniel Smith iridescent uh, I want to say antique gold but I think it's called Aztec gold and it's a bronzy type of a gold so it has that orange hint to it and works super pretty in this color palette um, so there I was looking at some swatches and oh, these are the a, a small set I got from Jane Davenport's the mermaid markers I was experimenting there, watching them out but um, I was looking at the um, other page predominantly to add some color and I decided to go for the raw um, Sienna by um, so this is acrylic ink by Dalleroni FW which is a artist great acrylic ink this particular color is really pretty because it can be um, quite opaque and also you can water it out and create a lighter um, color which will have more translucency to it so at this point I decided I needed some something dark there to kind of break up the area a little bit and create more of a composition because at the minute it was um, had that like a square almost shape to it because I'm working on landscape um, um, paper there it's just um, uh, yeah it didn't have a particular shape or um, composition to it so I decided to create the triangle and um, that way so the third one will come in a minute but that way it sort of um, almost brings like dynamic movement into the piece and creates almost like a circle and um, I do like that sort of look so that was considering where to put the third dot um, unfortunately I put the um, so this is Payne's Grey also by Dalaroni FW into still wet um, raw sienna and what happened is it got a bit muddy it and it um, became quite sort of a, a different color and the good thing is you can just dab it off because of the watercolor ground I find that um, it's sort of easier to um, well it feels easier to me um, to correct things so there I'm adding a little bit of that bronzite, burnt bronzite genuine again again creating more contrast and bringing things out and I really love this top area in the corner there looks so pretty so now I'm going to go back into that brush and um, you would need like a flat area like a plate to work with this brush um, it would be quite hard to stick it into half pants and um, work in small areas so like a flat area would be great and so here I'm deciding to bring this composition into a circular motion um, by guiding uh, a bit of um, brush mark making uh, in a certain shape which is spherical in this case and that um, again creates a bit of energy to it gives a little bit of um, energy to the piece as well as um, kind of um, brings the composition together and um, I like how the uh, the effect that you get from dragging the brush into like colors that perhaps are a bit more darker and still wet so that will pull the color and mix it with the color that you have on the brush and just um, yeah I really like that sort of um, effect that you get there so next thing um, 
this was a couple of days ago, so I kind of forgot. <laughs> I've been filming a lot of videos, so oh, um, so here I decided to pick a um, watercolor pencil, and I was thinking of what colors to go for. Typically, I would go for something like this, which is a teal color. Um, but I wanted to try something a little bit different, so I decided to swatch out a few uh, colors to give myself some options. And um, in the end, I'll go for a color which also works very well with this color palette. It's not as popping as a teal color would be, um, but it works really well uh, in, in the sense of the color palette. So this is the color that I actually swatched out first and then I didn't even need to swatch out the others you can see I wasn't really interested I knew I wanted to use this beautiful plum color it's called dark plum and uh, it's the museum aquarelle by Karen Dash pencil and you can see it works so beautifully with uh, up against the greens and the mustard yellows so at one point I decided to drag it uh, in that circle which I didn't like and then I decided to create some squiggles um, and the shape of them again I started sort of creating more of a straight line which didn't work for me so I will try to bend the lines a bit there we go creating some curv curving um, um, shape to the lines and that worked a lot better for me and what I'm doing there that you can't see is I'm just dipping the tip of the pencil into the water and that makes the pigment um, move and dissolve and become more of a watercolor and so um, it kind of um, wakens the pigments up and makes it more bright so if you just used it dry uh, the color wouldn't come out as much so there I'm just building a few things I didn't like um, too many squiggles there so I decided to add a little bit more of that raw sienna and that breaks things up again because it's a um, an opaque um, acrylic watercolor you can sort of mask things that you don't like perhaps you can build up the texture or you can build up layers with it and it's just fun fun to mix different mediums and create something that is like a beautiful mess actually looking at it now it looks to me like a teddy bear um, it's got like those two ears wonky eyes and the nose <laughs> that's quite funny um i didn't see that before so now i'm just um, adding some gold sparkles a little bit of the splashing again and that's it almost okay so i have dried it up mostly but it's not like 100 percent dried because you're actually not supposed to use heat with the um grout round sorry and I'm not sure why but um, yeah it's recommended not to do that so I'm just going to dab a little bit more just on top and that would be enough okay I'm gonna show you the close-up if I can find where to place anything here anymore <laughs> so here we go To me, this is such an interesting piece because you start with the buff titanium uh, and then you just have these textures and you have, look at this. So, and then you have the gold. I think the gold on top of the black areas was really nice because it really breaks it up. It's not as dark anymore and it has the beautiful... Uh, metallic of the gold shining and beautiful yeah so basically this is it almost feels like this one has gone doesn't have that darkness anymore 
which I feel like I want to correct. Okay, as you can see, this is a never ending process. So I'm going to add a bit of black, hoping now it won't go into this muddiness because before it mixed with, yeah, that's nice. It mixed with the um, raw sienna, which is quite muddy. Um, this ink here, muddy, I mean opaque. So that's why I kind of created a bit more of a different color, but now it's good. It's the third area that's kind of making it that triangular shape here. So if you connect the lines, kind of makes sense to me. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're going to try something abstracty in your journals. And thanks for watching. See you soon.